Next question is from Mama Penguin. What are the pros and cons of the touch and go deadlift versus the reset deadlift? I like this question. Yeah. Mm. Right now, so I have two um, close friends of mine that I'm I'm teaching how to deadlift virtually, which is really fucking hard to do, by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and they're, they're both experienced lifters, and but they never really. Uh, both female clients and they and they've lifted for a very long time but never really got into deadlifting and they're they're fans of the show and they're like I, I want to get better at it so I have them send me videos and I make cues and critiques and one of the things that it, everybody kind of just has a natural tendency to do is the the touch and go method which is a normal cadence or tempo of a movement like anything else but I love to teach the reset completely and and do like so if you're doing five to eight reps, doesn't matter how many reps, is you you lift it or you get in position and get everything tight, tense. You lift one time, you set down, completely reset. Even sometimes I have a, the client step away from the bar, then step back up to it. And really, what we're doing is we're just we're we're practicing. It's like a a, um, a baseball player who's getting ready to go up to uh, the mound, right? And he's getting ready to hit the almost every professional baseball player you'll see before he goes to swing the bat has this weird ritual. Some yep. of them straighten their wristband, they touch their hat, they hit their bat three times. Hit their feet and knock the dirt off. Yeah, yeah and if you if you don't understand the importance of, of that, you might think it's kind of silly, but there's there's you're, you're training the brain mm -hmm. to get into this, this perfect form and mechanics, and it's a ritual. And so I like to reset every deadlift to reset that ritual so it trains the body to be in that perfect position versus getting under it and you just start to get into this touch and go where what I see happens with touch and go is the breakdown of form. So that to me, that's this is the pros of doing single. And almost anybody that I'm teaching deadlifts, this is how I want you to lift. I never like touch and go unless – you're a very advanced lifter. If you're an advanced lifter, you've got great uh, uh, mechanics for deadlifting, nothing wrong with doing a touch and go, but that is the only person yeah. who I am recommending that to. Yeah, touch and go is can give you a little bit more explosive uh, power with the deadlift. You can get out more repetitions typically. Here's the challenge with it, maintaining really good form. Deadlifts are very technical, and uh, it's one of those exercises that's very safe, but if your form breaks down a little bit, the, it starts to become uh, mm. risky very quickly. Yeah, not it can all get away from you. Yeah, not all exercises are like this. Some exercises you can get real loose and your risk factor is not that high. Deadlifts aren't like that. Your form starts to go off, it starts to become very risky. Now, here's why one of the other reasons why it's difficult with touch and go. Touch and go is hitting the floor. There's almost no other exercise that does that. Like if I go up and down with the squat, I'm not banging the weights on the squat rack. I'm going down to the bottom. It's my body that stops the weight, and then I go all the way up. When you're doing touch and go, it's the floor that stops the body. You bring down the weight. You bang it. This really can mess up uh, people's form. So, yeah, if you're advanced, you've got really, really good stable body, and I never – I do touch and go sometimes. I never do touch and go with a weight that's heavy. Yeah, me either. It's always one that's yeah. not heavy, that's a little bit challenging, but not super challenging. You know, uh, if I'm going to do like stop, pause, deadlift, like a normal way, I might go 415, 455, maybe even 500 if I'm real strong. Touch and go, I rarely go above 315. For, for me, 315 is not heavy, and I know I can stay tight, tap the floor, and come up. Yeah, I like to, I actually like touch and goes where I like to add bands over and, and, and go through some of those like explosive reps uh, and do that, but definitely with light weight. Uh, it, I mean, it definitely, like, you, you get the momentum from it by hitting the ground. And so this is like something to consider. Uh, it definitely is going to affect, uh, you know, your form in, in performing this. So uh, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. It, it, it's one of those things that I don't have like your average person do. Like, it, you definitely have to be pretty versed uh, in the lift itself to be able to adjust. Uh, based off of all these different factors you're going to get hit with because, you know, when, when the weight hits the ground, it's going to shift your weight left to right. Yep. There's going to be instances where your body's going to need to react to that and be able to stabilize properly. So if you don't have that established ahead of time, it could be detrimental. I really feel like this wasn't even a thing until CrossFit. 
Mm. I, I, I know. I, I think of that too. I, I don't remember anybody really doing touch and go deadlifts before. Because you have the same thing with with cleans, yeah. uh, which which drives me crazy. Uh, body, watching people do cleans back to back to back. To bodybuilders, back. bodybuilders, if when they deadlift, which is very often, they would do a touch and go because it's more of a really yeah you know like pump and squeeze the back and you know typical bodybuilding fashion. Uh, but it wasn't very popular. I don't know very many bodybuilders that would deadlift in their routine, but the ones that did, um, oftentimes they would do this this touch and go where they're kind of squeezing the yeah, lats. I can't, and, I can't picture one of them doing it yeah, right now. I, I know Ronnie Coleman did some touch and go. Of course, great example of uh, your, the risk. Obviously, the dude's uh, you know, not like he used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there were other bodybuilders. I can't think off the top of my head. Some his, of their names. I, 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 okay, so Ronnie Coleman, have you ever seen his touch and go? Is not like the touch and go I'm thinking about right now. His touch and go look uh, like a uh, very smooth. Like, so his uh, what video is that? I'm trying to think of his his one of his videos. What do you famous. think when he was pulling 800 pounds? Yes, yeah, and he and he would do his his touch and go leading up to that big 800 set, and it's not bouncing off the floor. I mean, he's lifting 600 pounds yeah. controlled for three to five reps. I when you do a, a touch and go, don't bounce the weight off the floor. Touch it, yeah. and come up and and be careful because if one side touches before the other one. You're going to get a little bit of a shift, and that's when problems and happen. And that's, that's why I bring that up, because when I think of touch and go, uh, it's someone cueing that this is a touch and go deadlift, like they bounce. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's what you see a lot with crossfitters. Crossfit that, it's, yeah. it's really, really common to see them bouncing it off well, the floor. Well, they bastardize all kinds of exercises. <laughs> Thanks, CrossFit. 